All right, welcome back guys, JC here, and it is viewer requested video time. In the past, I've shown you how to build your own SKU planar antenna, as well as a clover leaf. This one has seen better days, I need to rebuild it. But point is, if you want to check out that video, look in the description below, and I will leave you the link to it. Today we will be building a linear polarized antenna. Now let me go ahead and say that you guys know me, um, and I know you. A lot of you guys have said that you enjoy how I tell you why we were doing something instead of just showing you how to do it. It does make the video a little bit longer, so if you are the type of people that do not like a lesson, then feel free to fast forward through this video. For the rest of you, I will explain how we go about this and why we were doing what we were doing. So what is a linear polarized antenna? It's one of these. I'm sure you've seen this before. You get these with every single video transmitter you purchase, just about. Uh, pairs of goggles, they come with everything and we all have a box of these laying around somewhere. They suck and they're very cheap. But JC, if they're that horrible, why am I making a video on how to make them? Well, they actually do have some benefits to them. The biggest benefits are going to be that they're lightweight, they're really cheap, and they're almost indestructible. And I'm not talking about these, I'm talking about the ones we're about to make. I have a variety of uses for them. I make them for my micro-sized multi-rotors, so here's the antenna here, and I solder it directly to my video transmitter. Here's just another example, and you can use them for more than just micro-sized multi-rotors. In fact, the one I'm about to make, I'll actually be using it on a full-size multi-rotor. Like I said, the quality of the video is not as good because it's not circular, circular, Jesus Christ, I can't talk. And just one more use is actually for my Tyrannus. I built this, it's tuned for 2.4 gigahertz. I've done, ooh, let me zoom out. I've done an antenna mod to my Tyrannus and I just screw this right on top and I now have a great performing antenna for 2.4 gigahertz. So what do you need? Well, you need coax cable. You can use RG316 or you could use RG178 or you could use a antenna that's made for a receiver. Which one would be best? Well, the thicker the coax cable, the thicker the shielding wires, the more RF, uh, I guess you could say shielding, RF shielding, you will have. So theoretically the thicker one is going to work better. But obviously you wouldn't want to use this on a micro-sized multirator. You would want to use something like this or you can meet in the middle and use the RG178. If you look in the description below, I will have links to all the products I'm using throughout this video. You might also want a SMA connector, uh, depending on if you were screwing this onto a video transmitter. If you were soldering this directly to a video transmitter, then obviously you don't need one. Next, let's find out the amount of signal wire we need exposed past the shielding wire. To do that, all you have to do is go to Google and we will type C, which is going to be the speed of light, divided by whatever frequency you want the antenna tuned for. Uh, for this example, let's do 5.8 gigahertz. You don't have to type gigahertz, by the way. And then we will divide that again by 4. Press enter. Move the decimal place from here to over here, and that gives us 12.92 millimeters. The reason we divided the speed of light and 5.8 by 4 is because this will give us a quarter wavelength antenna. If you want an antenna for say 2.4 gigahertz, it's going to be the exact same thing. Speed of light divided by 2.4 divided by 4 giving us 31.22 millimeters. Now let's take a digital caliper and because I'm making this for 5.8 gigahertz, I will set this to 12.92. Well it doesn't want to go, so 12.93, good enough. Estimate how long you want your antenna, and then add a little bit more length to that, and then make your cut. Next, take the cut coax cable, and instead of butting this up to the end, I'm actually going to go a little bit past, and then butt up my razor blade to this end, and make my cut right there. Then make another cut right down the middle, and then pull the jacket off. Next, let's take these shielding wires and kind of push them up get like a little bubble going on on the end. Take some wire cutters and trim it off. Once you have it trimmed all the way around, this should come right off. 
take your wire cutters and uh, just kind of trim up the end. Okay, that's good enough. The reason we went a little bit further is because actually getting your measurement like this is way easier than butting this side up first and then trying to trim that up because it's going to be off by about a millimeter. This way we can get it perfect. Well, I suppose nothing is perfect in life, but we can get pretty damn close. And we're good. Now take this end, and I'm going to butt it up to the end of this hex on the SMA. And then line up the razor blade to the tip of the other end of the SMA, and make my cut there. Let's pull the shielding wire back a little bit. Take the pen, if you do use SMA instead of RP SMA, and I will butt up this to just past the hole. You probably can't see the hole, but it's there and make my cut right about there. Now I'm going to put just a little bit of solder in the tip. Don't put too much because that will make getting the uh, pin on a pain in the butt. With some solder on the tip I'm just going to line up the signal wire and heat up the solder and the solder and the signal wire will just go right on. And that will give us something like this. Take your SMA connector, pop it on, make sure you push it all the way on. You know it's all the way on when the tip of that pin is just about level with the end of the SMA connector. Push the shielding wires back on and then trim up the excess. We'll put this back in my helping hand, make sure that it's pushed all the way on and then I'm just going to solder it on. You don't have to solder this on, you can use the uh, little crimping sleeve that comes with your SMA connectors. I don't like using those because they don't stay on that well. And there you have it, there's your linear polarized antenna. If you want, you can put heat shrink on the end. I don't, I don't really find a reason to. I guess it does make it look better, but... Now like I said, don't expect too much out of this antenna. It does not work as good as a Cloverleaf or Scoop Planar. But it will be very strong and hard to destroy. And even if you do destroy it, these connectors are reusable. Just heat up the solder, pull the coax off, and pop another one on. That does it for this one. I hope you learned something new. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon.